Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a lovely day. Now, one of my videos on this channel that's been doing quite well is titled How to Read Sun Path Diagrams. And in that video, I talk about looking at a sun path diagram and how to calculate where in the sky the sun is at a certain point in time in the year. Now, I've been getting a lot of positive comments on that video and I'm really glad people are finding it helpful, but I've also been getting a number of questions. Now, one of the questions I've been getting quite commonly is about how we actually design based on the sun path diagram. So how we read the sun path diagram and it, how it influences our design process. So that is the purpose of this video. I've devised six different ways in which your design is affected by the sun path and the, where the sun is around your building. I've ordered them from one to six, one being the largest impact and six being the smallest impact. Now I'm going to be experimenting with a different style of video, obviously you guys are seeing me here in the camera but I'll be cutting to myself on my desk and I'm going to be showing and I'm going to be doing some diagrams to help me articulate these points just because I think having a visual diagram would help explain some of these concepts. So let's get into it. So here we are on my desk, as you can see I've got my sketchbook in front of me and some of my pens. Now what I've done is I've created several diagrams to help me explain the points that I'm about to say. So what is the first and largest change that will be affected by our sun path? And that is site choice. Now why have I chosen this? If your sun is on the left side here, what you will find is that the shadow cast by this building will be relatively small. However, if your sun path is on this side, you're going to find that this building is going to create a very large shadow over your site. So the sun path diagram is extremely important to consider when looking at your site choice. Now another reason it's also important is if you're on some kind of hill or some kind of valley. For example, say you have a house here, the sun may come here and may cast a shadow on your building, again making it a really poor site. So these are the kind of things that you need to take into consideration when choosing your site. The kind of idea of how the light is going to hit your building, where the shadows are cast, whether, whether you're on a hill or a valley, and loads of things like this. So this is the first thing that your sun path is going to affect. So what is the second thing that your sun path is going to affect? Now I've chosen your building orientation. Now why is this? So. Say we have a sun path on this side of the building. That means in, if your sun is orientated this way, then this half of the building is gonna get the most sun. You can flip it sideways and get the most sun on this side, or you could flip it on a diagonal and ensure that these sides get the most sun. Either way, the way you orientate your building is gonna require looking at the sun path because certain rooms may need more light and certain rooms may not. Now, the third way the sun path is going to affect your design is going to be in your room positioning. Now, why is this? As you can see, I've marked out two areas here. Say we have a building and there's only a window on this side, so you only have light coming in this side. Now, why is this important? Different room types require different amounts of light. For example, we have a living room and a bedroom. Now, a bedroom is a typically private room and generally requires less light. Now, a living room is a communal area and may, you may want to have your living room have more light in it. So if that was the case, you'd put your living room here and have your bedroom on the back side. Or another reason being, say you have an office or a certain workspace, or even in the living room there is a desk where someone's working. Well, in that case, you're definitely going to need the most light. Now, I'm going to put on the screen now a diagram of the amount of lux required in different types of rooms. Now, what is lux? Lux is the measure of light. And for example, the amount of lux required in an office is significantly more than the lux required in a bedroom. Now, really quickly, if you're new to this channel, my name's Imran. I'm an architecture graduate. And the purpose of this channel is to help architecture students. I do a number of different videos based on things like how to read diagrams, certain software tutorials, and just how to do kind of presentation and stuff like that. So if you guys are an architect student and you're finding these videos helpful, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't, so you don't miss any more of my future videos. Now back to the video. 
Now, the fourth thing that is going to be affected by our sun path is going to be your material choice. Now, why is this? Some materials are more reflective than others. For example, a light material will bounce the light around a room. However, a dark material will absorb the light in your room. Now, this is not just going to affect light. It's also going to affect the light quality, the color of the room, and it's also going to affect things like heat. For example, this room will be significantly hotter because it's absorbing the heat energy. Whereas say this is a light room, it's reflecting it about, which means the room will be less hot. Now, the fifth thing that is going to be affected by our sun path is going to be sustainability. Now, why is this the case? For example, say you have a building here and this side of the building is, is receiving significant light. Well, this could be important because you may want to put solar panels on the roof. So now you can capture the sun, sun energy and actually utilize it and create a building that's more sustainable. Or another reason, say this area of the site is receiving significant amount of sun, you may want to include a geothermal system into your building. So essentially it's really important to look at how the sun hits the building and the surrounding site because it may be able to inform different sustainable technologies. And finally, the sixth root thing that I think is going to change based on your site is going to be your detailing. Now why is this? Say you have a sun over here, this is going to affect the size of your overhang that you're going to require. Or you can do a smaller overhang which means that more of the building receives light. This also affects things like louvers. For example, if you have a high summer sun, it can hit your louver and the light will not enter your building, stopping it getting heated. But if you have a low winter sun, the light can very easily pass through your louvers and heat the space. So this is really important for efficient and things like passive house, designs that utilize the sun passively. Now, this also applies to things like foliage. For example, say you have a building here and you have a, a summer sun, you, you want to shade the building using the tree. So this will stop the building heating up. Now in the winter, you want to get as much heat as you want, as you can into your building. So by having a, dis by having a tree that will lose its leaves in the winter, then the light is able to shine through the tree and easily into your building. Now, that's all I've got for today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Now, if you did, please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos that might be helpful for you. And if you have any questions or recommendations for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comments. I do read them all and I absolutely love your guys' comments. Thank you so much guys and I'll catch you in another video.